Well, welcome to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Wednesday, January 29th. Delightful day because we have two great stories to share with you, particularly about young people. Mm-hmm. Thrilled to share them with you. Uh, the, the March for Life just last Friday uh, yes. in Washington, D.C. Many, many people gathered uh, for the March for Life. And uh, it sounds like the majority of those who gathered for the March for Life were young people, were students, high mm-hmm. school students, college students, and even youth. So we're going to chat about that with one of our favorite youth organizations, American Heritage Girls. And in the second half of the program, celebrating National Lutheran Schools Week, students from St. Paul Lutheran School in Hamill, Illinois, here to share some stories with us as mm-hmm. well. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Joining us by phone, Patty Garibay, Executive Director of American Heritage Girls. Patty, thanks for coming back on the Coffee Hour. It is my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us about uh, the Respect Life Patch program that uh, American Heritage Girls has has been running now for, uh, for, I think, a couple of years. I know we've talked about this a couple of times. Tell us a little bit about the Respect Life Patch program. Absolutely. American Heritage Girls' uh, mission is building women of integrity through service to God, family, community, and country. And one of our ministry values is the importance of life from conception to natural death. And so in order to celebrate that important ministry value, which really differentiates us from other scouting organizations, as our firm stand around this, we have created a Respect Life patch. Now, This patch is just not an ordinary badger patch. This is the best-selling patch of all times in American Heritage Girls. And why I talk about that, it's not about the monetary income from it at all. It is about how excited our girls are to do something, to make a stand, to be part of the movement, which I think is very strong in today's youth, the pro-life movement. And so girls will do a variety of things to earn this patch. By the way, over the last year, we've sold 16,000 of these patches. Um, And that means it's a very popular patch. And they do this by either helping at a nursing home for those, for the elderly patient, or a pregnancy care center, or even doing something at their their school, such as starting a pro-life club raising awareness around life issues. In addition to that, we have girls and troops that actually went to Washington, D.C. this year, just this past Friday, and marched in Washington, D.C. for the National March for Life. And then we've got girls, other girls, that actually are at their March for Life in Indiana in Indianapolis or Austin or Pasadena, the various March for Life that are occurring across the nation if you can't make it to D.C. So I am so proud of our girls and our leaders and our troops because standing for life is part of being a woman. It is such a wonderful way for uh, girls to get involved in in this pro-life stance, uh, valuing life from conception to, to natural death. Uh, and uh, there's so many things to dig into. Um, you mentioned some of the ways that um, that girls can earn this patch. Do you have stories of of some of these girls um, in, in ways in th- that they've uh, that they've been able to earn this patch? I sure have. You know, the, the patch is, a, is rather simple for them to earn, but the girls that loved that and earned that as a younger girl often have taken on the, the, the whole ideology around pro-life and how important it is to our country and to our future, that they have taken it into their Stars and Stripes project. Now, Stars and Stripes is is much like what one might remember of an Eagle Scout, where it's a really large project. It's done in your your senior high years of high school, and you have to find a need in your community, and then you've got to not only identify it, but then do the project, lead other volunteers in the project, show your time management, fundraise, and just do a whole project management gig. It's, It's pretty amazing in resume building, but moreover, the girls are finding that they're God has given them a passion typically for what this thing is that they've chosen in the world to do. And so the, this, some of these stories are about pro-life. We have he, Phoebe from California who facilitated the Turquoise Table Project at the Fallbrook Pregnancy Resource Center. And this is a program that gives women with unplanned pregnancies hope and a chance to either become a mother or find the courage to give her child to another loving family. 
And so Phoebe created a community and fellowship space at the center. She built a picnic table and painted it turquoise with a gazebo for shade. And for decoration, she added hanging lights, a rug, and pots and flowers, and prayer stones so that the women who are making this important decision to stand for life and to give birth to their perhaps unplanned or unwanted pregnancy for that baby to have a chance to live and to make those women feel comfortable and welcomed. We've got Ruth from Alabama. Uh, She facilitated a beautification of the Huntsville Pregnancy Resource Center's memory garden. And she assisted with um, the Huntsville Pregnancy Resource Center, assist women and men facing handicaps and hardships that have to do with pregnancy. So Ruth solicited the help of her troop to make stepping stones and replace broken items in the garden and make overall improvements. So there's two garden projects Mm -hmm. that were done on behalf of Planned Parenthood. Um, pregnancy care centers, not Planned Parenthood by any means. And then uh, Crystal has been volunteering with her daughter. She's one of our leaders in in Missouri, in Missouri 1410, probably very near you, and working at the local birthright center for the last four years. So mom and daughter, AHD members are working side by side, helping women choose life. So those are just a few of the examples, but they're continually coming in, and we are happy to be part of the pro-life movement in our own little way. Outstanding. That's just fantastic to hear. And, you know, talking about the uh, the turquoise table project, uh, the, p- the painting the, the, the picnic table turquoise, I've heard of that before. This is the second time now oh. I've heard of a turquoise uh, picnic table. So there's something huh. in that story. Now I'm going to have to go research that some more. Uh, <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, seeing or hearing that, that these young women are um, recognizing that that there is, that there can be actions behind the words of of being pro life. That mm-hmm. taking action to care for, especially for mothers um, who have unplanned pregnancies, um, that uh, that that we can do so much to support them. And I, I heard this in the words of a young woman attending the March for Life this mm-hmm. year, recognizing that um, that. W- we can do so much through supporting um, the, these uh, pregnancy care centers as well to help these uh, mothers, these new mothers, and what that means in, in terms of actions in their own communities. Speaking of the March for Life, were there troops, uh, American Heritage Girl troops that uh, attended the National March for Life this year? There certainly was. There were troops as far away as Nevada and as close as Virginia. And the information is still coming in as they're sharing their stories and their pictures from the march. They were, um, I was excited to see that um, Reverend, uh, Reverend Harrison, Matthew mm-hmm. Harrison, he attended, right? That's so cool. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I love that we're seeing more of a ecumenical kind of thing going on there where um, we're all as Christians standing together saying this is what's important, um, that we need to make this stand. And even for our president for the first time ever, uh, not to be political, but that was pretty amazing, too. So um, I'm excited to see what's going on in our country right now in regards to our hearts turning towards life. I mean, imagine this. If we were really valuing life. What more would that say about the values in our country? And I am praying that we are moving back to where we should have been in the first place. Why is an event like this important for for younger girls uh, to go to and to experience and to be surrounded by other pro-life women? Well, I think it's really important to talk about this issue from a very young age. You know, a lot of people that are critics of American Heritage Girls Stand on Life say, this is a political issue. And I say, no, this is a God issue. Um, <laughs> the Lord has valued life. He, We were knitted in our mother's womb. Scripture talks about this. And so... Scripture is life, and we need to teach those scriptural and biblical truths to our girls at a very young age so that when and if they become confronted or a friend becomes confronted with this situation, they know the answer. They're not like rubbing, you know, scratching their heads saying, now what do I do now? That they know what to do and what the next best step is, and that is to allow all people to have a right to live and to have a life. One of the hashtags from the march this year, one the of the theme, the the theme um, mm-hmm. pro life is pro woman. Uh, I'd love to get your perspective on that, Patty. What is when you hear that that phrase, pro life is pro woman? I do not. I believe that there is no worse atrocity that has occurred 
to the feminine or the women's movement than the promotion of abortion. I have absolutely met hundreds and hundreds of women's lives who have been destroyed by that choice, by what they call a choice. My own sister's life has been destroyed. She cannot find forgiveness. And it has just been a horrible thing to see that women, in the name of choice, have allowed their lives to be destroyed. I, I feel like it, it's it's horrible. I I can't even imagine that anyone would think that that is a healthy emotional thing to do. And so I think pro-life is pro-women is an excellent adage. And it's not just an adage. It is the way we should live. Because, you know, when we follow what is right, we can live a life of joy. Maybe we've made a mistake. Maybe we did get pregnant before we were married and we had this child but we still did the next right thing, and we gave that child to a couple who desperately wanted one. And that was a sacrifice, and that was a beautiful thing that God will honor. And yes, the Lord forgives all of us for our sins, but this is an important say, do the right thing. And yes, pro-life is pro-women. Hmm. The uh, future events, we have just about a minute left, uh, upcoming I- events with American Heritage Girls this year or things that we'll be celebrating this year. Well, we are very excited. It's a big year for us, Andy. We're 25 years old. Wow. Congratulations. That's a big deal. A quarter of a, quarter of a century, as they say, <laughs> and we are celebrating. Um, we are having a girl convention, and it, the theme of our convention is Chosen. And I just love that. Our, our, our scripture that goes with that is, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And of course, that's Colossians 3.12. But the girls are going to enjoy workshops and speakers and music um, by a re- Christian recording artist, Riley Clemens, as well as learning about bullying and things like that, just how to survive and also to know that they are chosen by the Lord and they are beyond special because of that. So we can't wait to celebrate. We're also rolling out two new girl handbooks, which is going to be exciting for the girls. And these are really we be dealing with identity in Christ as well as new badges and sports pins. And then even I am going to be writing my book. My book will be released about the origins of American Heritage Girls, the battle that occurred um, in order to make this this thing birth, so to speak, and then what God has done uh, throughout my life and throughout the life of HG thus far. So it's an exciting year for sure. Patty Garibay, Executive Director, American Heritage Girls, thank you so much for joining us on the Coffee Hour today. Thank you. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth.